Here we're looking at a solution to a problem from the French Math Olympiad. So this is from the 1999 edition and it is question number two. And the goal is to find all natural numbers n such that n plus three to the nth power is the same thing as the sum as k goes from three to n plus two of k to the n power. And before we get into the hints, sometimes I like to point out some maybe connections that I have with the countries of these math Olympiads. So uh, several years ago, I went on a climbing trip to this place called Seuss, which is in south of France near Gap. And another thing, I know a math person from France named Anne Moreau. She is like one of the best researchers in the field of vertex algebras um, kind of going on right now. So um, if any of you guys have any contact with her, maybe say hi for me. And if you guys have ever climbed in Seuss or live around there, maybe drop a comment. Okay, so I've also got some hints for this problem. And the first hint is to find some small solutions. So like n equals one, two, three, four. And then what you will find is you get some solutions at small values of n, but it seems like there's a cutoff point where there are no more solutions. And that cutoff point will give you some sort of hint towards an inductive inequality that you can prove. In other words, this inequality that you can prove via induction. And there's actually a shortcut to do this whole problem, and that is to know an asymptotic formula for this power sum. So obviously it can be more general than this, but the power sum would be this kind of right-hand side of the equation. The sum k goes from three to n plus two of k to the n. So there's actually a nice asymptotic formula for that that would allow you to do this problem pretty quickly. But we're not gonna use that in our solution. Okay, so let's maybe clean this up and we'll get to the solution. Okay, so hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look at a solution. So we're gonna play around with small values of n first to see if we get any automatic solutions. And then we'll work towards that inequality that I was talking about. So let's maybe look at the n equals one case first. So notice for the n equals one case, the left-hand side of the equation is going to be four to the one and then the right-hand side of the equation is going to be the sum as k goes from three to three of k to the one. Well, that's gonna be equal to three. But now notice that four is not equal to three, so we do not get a solution for n equals one. And so that causes us to move on to n equals two. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's look at n equals two. So the left-hand side of the equation there is going to be um, five squared. And then let's look at the right-hand side. So that's gonna be the sum as k goes from three to four of k squared. But that, notice that's equal to three squared plus four squared, but five squared e is equal to three squared plus four squared. That's a nice Pythagorean triple there. So we do get a solution in this case when n equals two. Now let's go ahead and look at n equals three. So if we look at n equals three, the left-hand side of this is gonna be six cubed. And I might as well point out that six cubed is 216. But then you can check that 216 is the same thing as three cubed plus four cubed plus five cubed, which is the sum as k goes from three up to five of k cubed, which is the form of the right-hand side. So in other words, we have a solution when n equals three as well. And now maybe I'll leave it to you guys just to arithmetically check the following, that in the case that n equals four, there is no solution. Good. And also in the case that n equals five, there is no solution. So you can just check those by hand by number crunching, but that's what you'll get, no solution in either of those cases. And so that really gives some motivation that maybe there should not be solution after that. And if you play around with those numerical tests, you'll see that this left-hand side is growing much faster than this right-hand side. And so that's the claim that we're gonna make. So claim 
for n bigger than or equal to five. And I'm making the claim for n bigger than or equal to five because it's gonna work better with one of the last steps that we'll have to prove. But this is true for n bigger than or equal to four. But we'll just kind of check that on its own. So for n bigger than or equal to five, my claim is that this left-hand side is bigger than this right-hand side. So let's go ahead and write that down. So n plus three, to the n is strictly bigger than this sum as k goes from three to n plus two of k to the n. Now, how are we gonna prove this? Well, we're gonna prove this by induction. And so our base case will be the n equals five case. So we checked it on its own for n equals four. For some reason that we'll see a little bit later, it's best to prove it by induction for just n bigger than or equal to five. So the base case would be n equals five. But that was part of you guys' exercise to check the n equals five case did not give a solution. And in fact, you get this left-hand side is bigger than this right-hand side. So I'll just go ahead and put a check mark next to this. We have that this is true. Great, and now let's make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis will be that this is true for some value m, which is bigger than or equal to five. So in other words, suppose for m bigger than or equal to five, we have the following inequality. So it's gonna be m plus three to the m is strictly bigger than this sum as k goes from three up to m plus two of k to the m. And what we want to do is show that this implies the same statement, but where m is replaced with m plus one. So in other words, we wanna show that that means that m plus four to the m plus one is strictly bigger than this sum as k goes from three up to m plus three of k to the m plus one. And so I'll maybe like go ahead and clean up the board and bring this induction hypothesis underneath this claim to the top and we'll prove this. Okay, on the last board, we did some test cases and saw that n equals one did not give us a solution to this kind of thing. And then n equals two and n equals three worked. And then I left it to you guys to show that n equals four and n equals five did not work arriving us at this conjecture that n equals two and three are the only solutions. And we can prove that via this claim along with this special case at n equals four, which we'll see the importance of that a bit later. So the claim says for n bigger than or equal to five, we have n plus three to the n is strictly bigger than the sum as k goes from three to n plus two of k to the n. So notice that would be the left-hand side of this is strictly bigger than the right-hand side of this, so they may not be equal. So our base case was equivalent to checking this thing right here, which we didn't do, but that's just a calculation. And then we made an induction hypothesis and the induction hypothesis was that we supposed for some m bigger than or equal to five, that m plus three to the m is strictly bigger than the sum as k goes from three to m plus two of k to the m. And we wanna show that this implies that this inequality is also true when m is replaced with m plus one. So let's maybe see how we can do that. So maybe the first thing that we wanna do is mold this right-hand side of the inequality into something that looks like the right-hand side of our goal inequality. Maybe we'll go ahead and write our goal inequality over here. So we want to show that m plus four to the m plus one is strictly bigger than this sum as k goes from three to m plus three of k to the m plus one, like that. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is add m plus three to the m to both sides. So that's gonna make sure that we have a sum with the right number of terms on the right-hand side. It's not gonna be exactly the correct terms, but it's actually gonna get us in the right direction. So like I just said, let's go ahead and add m plus three to the m to both sides of this. Notice if I add it to the left-hand side, I just get two times m plus three to the m. That's because we've already got an m plus three to the m there. So notice if I add the same thing to both sides of the inequality, then that means the inequality still holds. So I've got m plus three 
to the M times two is bigger than, and now this right hand side, I'm gonna take this yellow part and bring it inside of the summation. So that's gonna give me this sum as K goes from three to the M plus three of K to the M. Again, the m plus 3 term here is just that yellow thing, so nothing's changed. Okay, but now notice what we want over here is k to the m plus 1, but what we have is k to the m. So what I'll do to get there is multiply both sides of the equation by m plus 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll take this and multiply this side of the equation to, by m plus 3. And that means I'm going to add one to the exponent right there. And now what I can do is replace m plus three in every term of this sum with k. And then I get something that's smaller because k is smaller than m plus three every time except for the last term when it's equal to it. So in other words, here we're gonna get this is bigger than the sum as k goes from three to m plus three of, I replaced all of these m plus threes with k, leaving me with k to the m plus one. Okay, good. But now we have gotten the right-hand side of the inequality to look like it's in the right form. Notice the form of the right-hand side of our goal is exactly what we've got. But the left-hand side is not quite there yet. But let's notice that we would be done if we can show that this left-hand side of the inequality is actually less than the left-hand side of the goal part of our inequality. In other words, m plus four to the m plus one is bigger than or equal to two to the m plus three to the m plus one. And this has gotta be true for all m bigger than or equal to five. And that's because those are the values of n that we're interested in in the first place. Okay, good. So notice that we can apply the log to both sides and that keeps our ordering in the same direction. So let's maybe go ahead and underline this thing in purple and notice that this purple inequality is equivalent to the inequality that is exactly the same just with the log being taken. So I'm gonna write this as m plus one times the natural log of m plus four um, is bigger than or equal to the natural log of two plus m plus one natural log of m plus three, like that. But now we can rearrange this inequality a little bit to see that that is equivalent to the inequality given by m plus one times natural log of m plus four minus m plus one times the natural log of m plus three is bigger than or equal to the natural log of two. Great. Now we're actually gonna check that this inequality is true by passing to a continuous argument. So this will be true if we can show that the function f of x which is equal to x times natural log of x plus three minus x times natural log of x plus two is bigger than or equal to natural log of two. And this has gotta be true when m is bigger than or equal to five, which means m plus one is bigger than or equal to six. And so that needs to be true for x bigger than or equal to six. And now we can check pretty easily that this is most definitely true. f of x is bigger than or equal to the natural log of two if x equals six. Now since it's bigger than natural log of two when x equals six, now we'll show that it's an increasing function. Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and bring that up and we'll do that next step. Okay, on the last board we argued that our claim, which finishes this problem off, will follow if we can show that this function given by f of x equals x times natural log of x plus three minus x times natural log of x plus two is bigger than or equal to natural log of two for x bigger than or equal to six. And I pointed out that f evaluated at six is already bigger than or equal to natural log of two. So now we just want to show that f is increasing. If we can show that f is an increasing function, then it's always getting bigger from this point when f is 
evaluated at six. So it's always getting bigger than natural log of two. So it's always gonna stay bigger than natural log of two. And so again, recall that a function is increasing if and only if its derivative is positive. So let's go ahead and look at the derivative of this thing. So the derivative using the product rule, so that's gonna give us x over x plus three plus natural log of x plus three. And then we've got minus x over x plus two minus natural log of x plus two. So we've got something like that. And now a calculation will show that f prime of six is bigger than zero. So in other words, it's increasing at six. And another calculation shows that, that this increase is tending towards zero. So in other words, the limit as x goes to infinity of f prime of x, so that's gonna be the limit as x goes to infinity of, well, let's maybe put some of this stuff together. So we can put this one and this one together, and you'll see that we get minus x over x plus two times x plus three. So I'll let you guys check that. That's just uh, combining some rational functions. Then we can put this one and this one together using log rules. So that's gonna be plus natural log of x plus three over x plus two. Now, as we let x charge to infinity, this guy right here is gonna to go towards zero. And we know that's true because the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator. But then the interior of this natural log is going to charge towards one because the degrees are the same and the leading coefficients um, divide out to one, but the natural log of one is zero, which makes this limit equal to zero. Good. So let's see what we have here. We have the derivative is positive at six. And then next we have the limit as X goes to infinity of this derivative is zero. Now the next thing that we're gonna show is that this derivative is always decreasing. In other words, the strength of the increase of this function is always decreasing. So let's talk through why this finishes this off. So if you've got a function that's decreasing, in this case, the function we're talking about decreasing is the derivative. So this derivative is decreasing and it is asymptotic with zero as x tends towards infinity then it must always be positive because the minute that it drops below the x-axis, in other words, the minute it becomes negative, it can never get back up to the x-axis to have this asymptotic behavior. So let's look at this second derivative. So I'll let you guys check all the details of the quotient rule or however you wanna take the derivative of this derivative. But you, what you end up with is minus five x minus 12 over x plus two squared times x plus three squared. And what that tells you is that that thing is less than zero for all x bigger than or equal to six. Well, that's pretty clear by the structure of this function. Okay, so again, let's talk about what we have here. So we have our derivative is positive at x equals six. The limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative is zero, but the second derivative is always negative. So this derivative is decreasing towards zero as x goes towards infinity. So in other words, we have f prime of x is bigger than zero for all x bigger than six. Again, if we got less than zero, then we'd never be able to achieve this asymptote at zero. But the fact that this function is increasing, <clears throat> But now that derivative being positive means this is an increasing function. It's increasing away from natural log of two. That means this function is always bigger than or equal to the natural log of two. But we showed that that finished off this argument that n plus three to the n is bigger than the sum as k goes from three to n plus two of k to the n for n bigger than or equal to five, leaving us with these two solutions only. So n equals two and n equals three are the only solutions. And that's a good place to stop.